Welcome back, folks. My next guest tonight is a political commentator and host of MSNBC's The Last Word. Please welcome Lawrence O'Donnell. <laughs> Being back. Thank you very much. How you been? Uh, uh, under pressure. Under it's pressure. Real pressure. Yeah. Why are you under extreme pressure? Because we're covering the most extremely strange presidency in history. That's and, true. That's true. It's very and, strange. Uh, and we do it. Uh, we do it live at 10 o'clock on, mm -hmm. on my show. And what that means is we used to be able to start writing this show at three o'clock. Yeah, yeah. And now you start writing it at about five minutes of ten because the tweets, <laughs> the tweets are coming in like crazy. And they change the news cycle completely. Yeah. Which I think is kind Not of Not to purpose. mention the indictments that come sure. in and things like that. So yeah, yeah. so we are yeah. we are getting shaken up all the time. Are you? Are, does it? Does it? I kind of like that uh, the president is in Asia twelve hours ahead for the next uh, like week and a half because when we're writing our show, he's asleep. Yes. Yes. That's. <laughs> And he can't change the news cycle because we tape around 5:30. But in you know the evening. how little he sleeps. He's a serious insomniac, and so right, I right. imagine on this trip, it, that's gonna, you can't rely on that. No, uh, they must give him. He, does, he may, must give him a little something, a little mother's you little help. Think helper. so? The president of the United States. I. Uh, you can't give know. a sleeping pill to the president. I don't, I, I don't you know. would know. I, mean, I would not know. Why would not you not know. know? You wrote on West Wing. That's correct. I did. <laughs> and we never. Let's see. There were 154 episodes. I can't remember how many sleeping pill episodes there were. <laughs> I don't remember Martin. I don't know. Maybe he did. Now, okay, so that was a fantasy. Even in its day, it was like liberal government fantasy porn. But <laughs> there were extraordinary, like there were, there were like crazy storylines in that. Was there anything that you guys wrote that was anything as crazy as the oh, storylines no. we're getting now? Th this would, you know, every single thing that's happened probably in the last two years of our politics. I would have been sitting in the West Wing writer's room saying, no, 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 that can't happen. I would, have, I would have shot down every one of the, you know, game show guy, you know, reality show guy runs for president. I go, no, no, it, it can't happen. You know? Uh, runs. Right. And, Wins. And, and so now, yeah, so guess what that does? What? That destroys drama. Dra fictional television drama about a White House is now destroyed because there's absolutely no gravity to it. It's pretty you know, good. It's pretty like, good. No Lawrence, it's pretty good for comedy. Though. It's very good for comedy. <laughs> That's not fair. Sorry. Not fair. Now you have a, a badge of honor, if that's what it is, in that you were uh, one of the first uh, TV uh, political pundits, if you don't mind that term, uh, to I'll be take attacked it. to be attacked by the president before he was the president this was in 2015. Um, I hear that dopey political pundit Lawrence O'Donnell, one of the dumber people on television, <laughs> is about to lose his show. No ratings, too bad. <laughs> and then this is even better. I heard because his show is unwatchable that Lawrence has made many false statements last night about me. Maybe I should sue him. Mm. <laughs> That's, uh, that's my space in Twitter history. I'm the first person, I think the only uh, TV person that he threatened to sue on Twitter. On really? Twitter. Yeah, he actually did, did, did he, sue. Did he, he sue you? He sadly, he, uh, he, he didn't sue me. He saved up all that, uh, the lawyer's fees to sue Bill Maher. Remember he sued Bill Maher? Very, did he actually sue Bill Maher? Very briefly sued Bill Maher. Uh, and then, of course, the suit was thrown out by a judge who said, this is silly. Uh, but I... <laughs> I didn't get sued. I wanted to get sued. I begged him to sue me, actually, <laughs> after he did that. Um, I'm, in, I'm next. Now, <laughs> I can't even get... You won't even tweet about me. Yeah, no, well... You won't even tweet about me. That's fascinating. It's fascinating they won't tweet about you. What, what do you have to do to get him to tweet about you? You haven't gone far enough. Say something understand. nice about him. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> that would do it. Not gonna happen. That would do it. All right. <laughs> now, you got a new book here. It's called uh, Playing with Fire. It's about the campaign of 1968. What, uh, wh what today can we learn about the transformation of our politics? Anything here that we can learn about today's politics? We, we can see all of the precedents uh, that occurred in 1968, which is kind of where our modern politics began. 
for what we just saw in the last campaign. Uh, George Wallace's campaign manager, he was the segregationist Alabama governor who was running as an independent in 1968. His campaign manager told me last year that when he heard Trump speak as a candidate, he was hearing George Wallace. It was pretty much the same thing. George Wallace was the very first candidate who used the protesters in his audience to show how tough he is. He would yell right back at them and fight with them. And the second one to do that was Donald Trump. No one in between thought fighting with the protesters in the audience was a good way to present himself. Now, uh, you, you say in the first sentence, um, you talk about uh, Roger Ailes meeting Richard Nixon uh, back in 68. Why start there? Because Roger Ailes met Richard Nixon at a show like this, the Mike Douglas show that Roger Ailes sure. was the producer of. He met Richard Nixon in a makeup chair when, when Richard Nixon was beginning his presidential campaign. Nixon loves this guy, Ailes, who seems to know all about TV, pulls him into his campaign, takes him out of show business into politics. Roger Ailes then changes completely the way TV, is, TV campaigns are run, gets Nixon elected, goes on to help Reagan get elected, helps George H.W. Bush get elected, then creates Fox News. If, if Richard Nixon had not, met Mike Doug had not met Roger Ailes in that Mike Douglas makeup chair, we don't know who the President of the United States would be today because Roger Ailes created this amazingly effective Republican television network called Fox News, which supported Trump all the way. Uh, and without that, I don't believe that Donald Trump would have made the Electoral College outcome go his way. And then there's other sentences after that. There are. <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot. Playing with Fire is out now. The man is Lawrence O'Donnell, everybody. We'll be right back.